Um, we should move on. Let's talk about. Let's talk about. We got one more GDC thing, and then I want to talk to Jeff about his awesome latest thing. So this is like we literally put my tweets in a news thing because I went to Jordan. I went to this uh, this session on the next generation of OpenGL. OpenGL is a graphics programming standard that's like not direct 3D, right? So if you're not building right. games for Windows, even if you are building games for Windows, but you want to build for cross-platform stuff, this is what you build. And I was going to do a live blog, and then I just failed to get it ready, and so I just tweeted all this stuff, and they stuck it in a news post. <laughs> so, so that's what we have. But um, this was the unveiling, basically, of the next generation OpenGL. You know, everybody's doing new graphics APIs. AMD came out with Mantle, which is just for Radeons, you know, uh, uh, well, over a year ago. And then every, everybody kind of looked at that and said, oh, yeah, like, we should fix this. Like, we'll all do one. <laughs> and so Apple did Metal, which was its low-level API. Um, and Microsoft announced Direct3D, uh, or sorry, DirectX 12, Direct3D 12. And the OpenGL guys at the Kronos Group uh, said they're going to do what they call GL Next. And GL Next turned out to be uh, something they now have an official name for called Vulkan. And uh, this was an interesting presentation of a new API because instead of it being like announcers from uh, Intel and NVIDIA and AMD and etc., it was just like the game developers. Uh, uh, Johan Anderson at, from DICE who, who's been involved with uh, AMD on, in making Mantle and some of those things and a number of other game developers from Valve and Epic and places like that got up and gave a presentation about this and you know what this is is AMD handed Mantle, it's low level API for Radeons to the Kronos group and the Kronos group all the developers and the various other hardware vendors got together put their heads together and adapted it to work on any hardware basically um, so there are a number of adjustments that they kind of had to make to make sure different types of GPUs that execute things differently would be able to be compatible with this but this is mantle for the the wider world and uh, as this was announced, I guess or even before, AMD's uh, graphics CTO did a blog post where he talked about the future of Mantle. And it was a little cryptic, but basically what, it, what he was saying is, like, this is kind of sunset for Mantle for the most part. Uh, they're going to use it internally. I think they'll develop, like, middleware on it and new technology stuff, like prototyping. But, um, but Vulkan becomes, like, the thing for cross-platform low-level graphics. And um, if you look at the, the article here, there's some tweets about it. It's like super nerdy stuff about <laughs> how it all works. Um, but what it comes down to that's really interesting is uh, when you're writing a program now for graphics, like it used to be with OpenGL, Direct3D, whatever it was, uh, you would kind of like describe like, hey, draw this stuff on the screen. Um, you know, I want some polygons here and like stuff would happen you didn't understand and then like a picture comes out the other end. Now, this is really lower level. This is kind of like, hey GPU, like allocate memory here and run this shader, uh, execute these commands and like then a drawing happens if you did it right. But you're telling the GPU what to do much more explicitly and the expectation is that um, it will do the things that you told it to do in that order <laughs> instead of like just kind of going off and, and drawing. So I think that this means that you get, well, we know it means you get way lower CPU utilization. You make it a little bit faster graphics execution. Um, those are the big things. So the CPU use in, in current APIs is kind of a mess, and I think this really solves that. Um, but, but it also means that the complexity for developing graphics applications moves into the application and out of the graphics drivers, which as if you've been living the dream with PC gaming, you've known that graphics drivers are uh, a huge issue that are a huge part of like owning a PC is constantly updating them for the latest games. I think a lot of that complexity goes away uh, and really what you have is um, the game developers have the control, but they have to manage that complexity themselves. They allocate memory themselves, they deallocate it, they can, they can break things that they couldn't break before because they didn't have control. Um, but it's, it's just a new world. And, and so I think things like uh, the game engines become more uh, important. 
here because a lot of people are not going to mess or want to mess around with developing uh, in the low level graphics API if they're not like super graphics nerds. Um, mm. But probably we get more goodness overall. And I did, this is not really related, but I should say the other thing that happened at GDC, guys, did you cover the source engine thing? Um, no, I don't think we did. So there were, we did the Unreal Engine went free. So you don't have to pay to get Unreal Engine now to develop. It used to be like 19 bucks a month, which was cheaper than it used to be. But you can just go download it and start making a game. You have to pay 5% of your royalties over like $3,000 when you start selling the game. But anybody who wants to can get it and use it. Um, hmm. As part of that, NVIDIA Physics, which is the physics engine in Unreal Engine, went open, s right. open source or free source or however you want to put it. So you can download and see the, the physics code. The joke there is maybe somebody will compile it now to like use SSE instead of x87 floating point because <laughs> they they've had some, some problems in the past with not really being well optimized. Um, and then... Uh, uh, Unreal Engine did that. Unity 5 was announced. Unity is kind of the, the big game engine the indie developers are using that forced, I think, Unreal Engine to, to go free. And then Valve announced Source 2 Engine, which is the follow-up to the engine they've been using for a number of years. And it's also free. Um, so there are, I think, going to be a lot of options for developing games. And maybe not in this generation, but probably like in the next. Uh, and, and it'll start sooner than and like a complete new rejiggering of these engines, but um, these games are going to be interfacing with these low level, or these game engines are going to be interfacing with these low level APIs, and I think that's going to be like the future of development for for graphics. So everything changed uh, last week at GDC, and Vulcan was part of it. I also went to some direct uh, direct 3D12 sessions. All the big vendors are, you know, Intel was talking about it, AMD's talking about it, NVIDIA's talking about it. Um, that's happening with Microsoft. It's very similar in the way you use it to Vulkan. Um, Jordan, there's a guy from uh, Oxide Games. I, I, I'm not sure all the games they make, but, but, but they do, I think, some RTS stuff. And he was demoing the Vulkan API um, and he actually had working code because he had worked hmm. with Mantle and he showed like much lower CPU utilization and he had this slide that he presented and it was like black background with white lines on it and it had all these different like threads and, and it, th the point was that you could use like eight threads on an eight core CPU and you'd use all of the threads effectively and get good results out of it, right? Um, and that's something you haven't been able to do with past APIs. Like they, they kind of just wind up being gated by one or two threads. Um, but this, now you can dispatch more work to a GPU with multiple threads. And so he gave that. And then I left that presentation and went to another one that was from AMD on DirectX 12. The, the guy from Oxide shows up to talk about DirectX 12 instead of Vulkan. And he has the same slide, except for it's like a different, it's like a, a white background with like a black lines <laughs> and where it said Vulcan on the other one in each of the threads it now said direct 3d 12 <laughs> and it was the same game it was the same model so so you get an idea that like they're 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 all about kind of the same and they're about kind of uh allowing the developer to program the gpu according to how it, a modern gpu now operates um but it was just hilarious to see hmm. like that, that he used the same slide for both of them. And it's relevant, you know, in both cases. Yeah, I guess that makes sense.